Welcome to our home. Ernie and I feel privileged to share a few thoughts with you each day for the next two weeks. Grab a Bible or a paper and pencil to jot down the references. We hope you will find a way to talk with us and with each other about the ideas that we present. I have to talk to thank my four-year-old grandson for the theme for this week's thoughts. Early in February, our family, our younger daughter and her family came to visit Grandma and Grandpa. We had lunch together and then I had to leave for my art group that meets Monday afternoon at the church. When I returned home, Ernie drew my attention to three snow people at the side of our house. You could see them through the dining room window. I asked, is that the three kids? And he said, no. According to the four-year-old, Oakley, it was Grandpa, Grandma, and Jesus. Well, appropriately, Grandpa was taller than Grandma, and Jesus was significantly bigger than both of us. In conversation with my daughter, I asked where he might have got that idea. And she responded that he has an excellent Sunday school teacher who has planted in his mind the conviction that God is everywhere present. How appropriate for this time. I began to think about individuals who learned that God was with them. Some were believers, some not. Some actively sought God's presence and some discovered him there unexpectedly. Some accounted, uh, encountered him in everyday events, and some in times of stress and difficulty. So I'd like to open up a conversation about God being with us through some of the characters in Scripture. The first is found in Genesis chapter 16. Let me introduce Hagar. She's an Egyptian slave owned by Abram and Sarai. Her masters had received the promise from God that they would have a son, but they could not wait. Hagar was impregnated by Abram in an example of the worst kind of sexual exploitation by someone in power. She runs away and in the desert encounters God. It seems logical to me that she was not a believer in Abram's God, but that does not exclude her from God's watchful care. God speaks to her in Genesis 16, 7 to 12, assuring her that he sees all that has happened and has a plan for her life. And she responds in verse 13, You are the God who sees me. I have now seen the one who sees me. To me it says, even if we are not in close relationship with him, he knows what is happening in our lives. And if we listen, he will speak to us the words of assurance that we need to keep going. Let's pray. Father God, Help those of us who are followers of Jesus to trust today in your character. You see us and work in love for our good. For those who have not yet trusted you with their lives, may they find comfort in the knowledge that you see them as well and have a loving plan for them too. Amen.